Hello. Today I'd like to talk about the demise of uh, Inbox by Gmail. And um, since Google is killing it pretty soon, and uh, the continued use and uh, hopefully rise of uh, Gmail even more so than it already has been risen. Um, but seriously, though, um, Inbox was a very innovative and very unique program when it came out. And I certainly uh, had a lot of affinity for it. Um, to a large degree, I still do, although now with the new Gmail, uh, a lot of things that really made Inbox stand out are no longer necessary because they're part of Gmail anyway. So I think that's one of the reasons or the reason why Google is killing the Inbox, even though it still has some features that uh, are different from Gmail. So today what I'd like to do is just like to go through both programs and kind of show you uh, feature by feature um, of what the differences are. Not so much the differences, but more importantly, what, what are you going to be missing by when the inbox is gone if you've been using it, and how can you duplicate the missing functionality using either Gmail or using other software. So it's not so much the difference between inbox and Gmail, um, because inbox is going to be going, who cares? Uh, what the differences are. The important thing is that the features that were in Inbox, how can we continue to use them if we like to use them? So that's what we're going to be talking today about. Okay, so here we see Gmail, and I'm going to pull up Inbox next to it. Uh, let's move this tab a little bit closer here so you can see that, or so I can have it close to each other. And so as you can see, they look different. I mean, the, the look, the feel, of both of these applications is very different. If you go to Inbox by itself, without doing my usual special stuff, um, you can see it looks like that, and Gmail by default looks like this, so they definitely look different. But they're using, they were using the same uh, data set, they were coming from the same, um, basically, store of emails, and so you're really looking at the same thing, but it just has a different look to it. And so let's kind of go through uh, quickly and see what we're doing in Gmail, what we're doing in Inbox. So one of the things that Inbox that was unique is the look itself in terms of the colors and the interface being dramatically different from Gmail. And as you can see, it still looks dramatically different. It had a nice kind of light colored kind of bluish theme to it using material design, which is very nice. And the new Gmail, they adopted material design, but it doesn't look anywhere near as slick as Inbox did. In my, inbox looks a lot, in my opinion, a lot sleeker. It uses a lot more white space. It has, um, basically it was just, I think it was a very clean design to it, which Gmail still does not have the same. Even if you run it in default mode without any pictures or anything, it still doesn't quite look, it looks similar, but it doesn't quite look the same as the Inbox did. Um, but, you know, with Gmail, you can obviously change backgrounds, you can change the colors, you can do a lot of things to try to make it look as uh, close to uh, what you would like. So that's doable. And that's not obviously a major part of it, it's just a minor part, but it did look dramatically different and look very nice. So that's one thing um, about it. Second thing is they introduced some things in here that they call bundles. And uh, we'll just quickly go through that. Bundles basically are nothing more than Gmail labels. I mean, that's the easiest way to look at them. Even though they're called bundles, you can drop you know, messages into these bundles and you can then do some, you can look at the messages in bundles and you can have the bundles be part of inbox or be uh, something separate. On the Gmail side, even though you don't have bundles, you have labels. And essentially labels, let me just get to them right here, right here. Um, if you look at labels, you can see that labels have very similar situation in terms of, uh, I mean, labels look very similar to bundles because it's the same name, basically the same things that you do with labels that you can do with bundles. Uh, so for the most part, it's the same. But one thing that they did in uh, Inbox, they had some special bundles. For example, they had a bundle uh, for things like finance and bundle for things like purchases and bundle for things like trips. And so if you click on trips, it shows you 
you know, various trips that I went on. So it automatically does that for you. So you don't have to worry about it. And if I click on my trip to Scottsdale, Arizona, uh, for example, and then I see, you know, what the airlines were and, you know, related uh, itineraries, things like that. So it was a convenient, convenient thing to do. In Gmail, of course, we don't have anything like that, but you can easily set up a label called travel and you can easily uh, set up a uh, filter that would, or a set of filters, I should say, a number of filters that would essentially do the same thing. You can say that whenever there is an email that comes from Expedia or comes with the words travel in the itinerary or comes with, you know, whatever criteria you want to indicate, of course, you can keep adding them as, as uh, you get new emails that maybe look a little different, but also should be part of travel, then Gmail will automatically assign them all to this one label called travel. And then you simply click on that label and it'll show you just like you click on any label, show you all the emails in that, uh, uh, in that category or in that, with that particular label. So it's easily duplicatable by doing a little bit of setup, manual setup yourself, and it'll do the same essentially thing. Same goes for finance, same goes for anything else. And uh, it is nice that they did it automatically. Now you have to do this little bit of setup to have this automation happen like this. But the beauty of using Gmail instead is that you really don't have any limits. You know, Google only set up trips and uh, saved and purchases and finance. And the other ones, they had social updates, forums and promos are the same as we currently have on Gmail as categories. But you essentially have no limit in terms of how many labels and how many uh, different categories you want to have for yourself. Maybe you want to have your business receipts, for example, be stored in a separate bundle or separate label in case of Gmail. So you can easily do it. So you're, you're losing this capability that's going away in the inbox, but at the same time, you can easily duplicate it in Gmail. And of course, the bundles themselves, the regular bundles are just nothing more than labels. So it's the same kind of deal. It used to also do things like if you add an email that come into inbox and you say, I want to add it to this particular bundle, it'll ask you, do you want to do it every time when you get these kinds of emails? And so if you say yes, then it'll automatically do it. Again, you can easily set up a filter in Gmail. And the way you do that, you simply set up, you go to search and under search, you do a search for whatever the criteria may be. Uh, let's say, uh, I don't know, let's put in something like uh, I don't know, French. And there are any emails that have the word French in it. So I want to set up a label called French. And as you can see, I have a bunch of emails that have French in the email. So I can just pull down this box here on the side of the search. And then it already says, has the words French in it. And then I can go ahead and say, create a filter. And then here I can go ahead and indicate what I want to do with this filter. In my case, I want to apply a label. So I can either create a new label or select an existing label. So I can set up a new label called French and then have that checkbox checked. And then if I want to see it as part of the inbox, because on inbox you can have bundle in the inbox for Gmail app, you can have bundles that automatically are tied to inbox or shown when you look at inbox or um, which is the, where the main emails are or not. It will only show when you click on that label. Here, the way it works is it would show up automatically in your inbox um, unless you um, archive it. And you can easily, you know, there's an option. One of the options here is it says apply the label and then it says um, somewhere here, right here, skip the inbox and archive it, the first one. So if you put those two things together, it will get it out of your face. And at the same time, it's gonna uh, automatically file it under that category every time an email comes in uh, with that particular criteria. So you can duplicate the exact same functionality where an email comes in, it automatically gets labeled a certain way, automatically gets stored, and either can show up in the inbox or inbox being not the app inbox, but the uh, inbox on Gmail right here, this inbox, uh, or it'll be invisible to you, it'll be just sitting in that label and you can access it anytime you do a search or anytime you click on that label. So exact same functionality can be easily duplicated by using uh, filters in Gmail. Okay, so let's just kind of go down the list. What else we have here? We got inbox, same thing as inbox on, on Gmail. We have snoozed. That was a big difference between Gmail and in inbox by Gmail. 
uh, is that you were able to snooze messages. So if you're sitting at, in your email box and you have some kind of a message, uh, for example, uh, uh, doesn't really matter. Let's say I take this Gmail from Google, not Gmail, but email from Google. And what I can do is I can snooze it by clicking on the little uh, clock icon up here. And I can say I want to do it tomorrow at 9 a.m. Or I can set up whatever daytime I want. So if I click on it, it will disappear from this display in the inbox. And then tomorrow at 9 a.m., because that's what I specified, it will show back up. And that was a huge deal in terms of management of emails, because now you can really maximize your efficiency with emails by because all of us get tons of emails by saying, you know, click on select whatever emails you want, and then you can say snooze them until this weekend or snooze them until day after tomorrow or snooze these three until uh, tomorrow afternoon. Uh, whatever you wanted to do, you can easily do to move these out of your hair so you can deal with things that are more immediately more important. And that, of course, makes, it, uh, makes management much, much easier, much better. So that was a huge thing that they had in Inbox by Gmail, and it wasn't part of Gmail. But in, now in the new Gmail, they added exactly the same functionality. So if I want to look at my email, and when I look at this message here, and if I want to go ahead and, and uh, snooze it, I'll just click on this little snooze icon at the top after selecting one or more messages. I can say I want to snooze it till this weekend, for example. So I click this weekend, and you can see it's gone from the inbox. Huh? So it won't bug me, and then it'll come back this weekend. Now, when it comes back, it's going to look like something like these messages below here, where it says snooze two days ago, snooze 15 hours ago, and so on and so on. So it will come back to your inbox. It will show you this is something you snoozed before, so you know. You can also click on the snooze this link under the inbox, and it will show you everything that you have snoozed, including, of course, my uh, alert there for Google and so on and so forth. So it shows everything when it's coming up. See, this is on October 12, 13, so on and so on. Um, even got a couple. So everything that you snooze, you can see easily there. So it's the same thing as was in inbox using the snooze capability and the snooze uh, folder here, if you will. Okay? Anything that uh, you're dealing with that you're done with, you can click on done uh, by clicking on the checkbox next to the message indicating it's done. That was essentially the same thing as saying, I'm, I'm going to archive it. I'm done meaning I'm archiving it. And of course, we've had archiving in Gmail uh, since the beginning, so no big deal there. Then you have your drafts, your sent, your uh, reminders. Reminders is something that was an inbox that was also very, very useful. Uh, unfortunately, they did not duplicate the same functionality in Gmail, even in the new version. So there's no way to set a reminder in Gmail. You can do the snoozing, but it's different than setting a reminder. And so what you can do in Inbox by Gmail, you can just say, I want to set up, uh, I want to add a new reminder, which is not an email message, just a reminder on a certain date, and then you can put in a description, and then you're done. And that goes ahead, and, uh, and you can indicate when you want to have it come back using the snooze button. And you can also pin it if you want. Uh, we'll cover the pins shortly. So basically, very, very simple how you can um, create a reminder. In addition to that, you could take an existing message. For example, let's say I take this message here. Uh, you can actually then have um, a reminder line, and you can actually add additional meta text if you want. Um, more info about email. So I can actually put whatever I want right there. And so it's, it's a reminder for myself that, that has some additional information, which is very useful. I mean, it's definitely useful. It's handy. It's convenient. You don't have this in Gmail. There is no reminders in Gmail, and there is no uh, email descriptions like this additional um, uh, annotations, if you will. So how do you handle it in email, in, in Gmail? I'm sorry. Um, the way you handle it, at least the way I would recommend you handle it, is you can use uh, Keep. That's probably one of the easiest way. I realize it's a little bit more. Uh, you're talking about two apps now, but everybody has it. If you have a Google account, you have Gmail, you also have Google Keep. So a lot of people don't use it because they don't even know that it exists or they don't know what it is, but it's an awesome note-taking application. But in this case, we're not going to be using it for note-taking. We're going to be using it as a glorified uh, reminder that's much, much better than just regular reminders on inbox by Gmail. Here's what I mean. I look at the, uh, I take, for example, this computer world uh, email. Let's say I want to uh, 
set up a reminder for myself. Not just snooze it and come back, but actually set up a reminder. So what I can do there is I can, an annotation, not just reminder, but annotation too. Okay, so the way, the way I handle the, the annotations and reminders is by using Google Keep or Keep Notes as it's called now. So let's go through an example. Let's say that I wanted to um, do something with this computer world message. So I have it selected. I want to do something with it. So all I have to do is I can click on Keep extension here. Not extension, but Keep uh, add-on for Gmail, which everybody has now. And everybody has Google Keep notes as well. And so if I do that, if I then click on take note, take a note, you can see that it gives me a chance to put in the title. So title for computer world. And this, you can put anything you want, obviously. Um, title sample. So. And then here you put in description. Can have multiple lines, so as much as you want. You just keep that. Okay. Then one other aspect of it that's interesting is that when I'm get when I'm done here, I just simply click done and I'm done. But at this point, what you could also do is you can then click on open and keep option by pulling down the menu. And now I go to this. <clears throat> keep note, notice that it's got my information here, everything else, I can add some more stuff to it, um, I can change colors, I can do usual keep stuff, I can add images, I can do whatever I want to do with it. But the beauty of this thing, the key thing here, is that I can click on remind me icon, and I can indicate I want to be reminded next week, and this reminder will come up on my calendar, it will come up on my phone, so it will remind me basically in all the usual places, just like the inbox by Gmail reminder used to work, it's the same thing that's going to happen here. The beauty of this approach is not only am I getting some small description like I had before. Now I can get a rich note with images with all kinds of stuff in it as part of it. And then the other beauty of it is when it comes up, actually, and I, you know, it'll come up as a, I can open it and keep, then I can also have this link down there if you see that. I have a link here. And if I click on this link from this keep note, then it'll open email right to that email. So in other words, the integration with Google Keep is done beautifully, so it actually opens Gmail directly into the email I was looking at. So essentially have this majorly rich annotation capability for any email using this approach. Yes, you're reading a bunch of Keep notes, but who cares? Okay, you can easily put them into a separate label if you wanted to. You can always delete them. I mean, you can do all kinds of stuff. But speaking of duplicating the reminder capability and annotation capability that Inbox by Gmail had, now you can do the same thing in regular Gmail using this functionality with um, integration with Google Keep Notes. Okay? All you have to do is select the message, click on Take Note uh, on the sidebar there, and then type in your note, and that's the minimum you need to do. But then you just simply open it and keep, and then set up a reminder for yourself. And that way, so if you need an annotation, you don't need to do a reminder. If you need to actually be reminded as well, then you go ahead and do that. If you don't need an annotation, if you just want a reminder, then you simply say, take note. You don't put anything in it at all. There's nothing to put in. You simply click on the open and keep, and then you click on the uh, reminder icon and indicate when you want to be reminded, and you're done. You know, once you do that, then you're done. And then it's going to automatically come up in your calendar, and it's going to automatically come up in, in, uh, uh, on your phone. So you'll be reminded at the right time of the right uh, thing. And then when you open it up and keep, you will have this link to go back to the, to the email in question so you can see what it's referring to. So very handy, very convenient, very useful. If any of you uh, have any questions about this or I'm going a little too fast, um, obviously you can always play this part back again. But feel free to ask questions. I'll be happy to answer. Not, not a problem. But it is a pretty slick way to do it, and it's pretty easy and you know, works really well. So that's, um, that's how you can duplicate the functionality of uh, um, reminders in, that were there as part of the inbox by Gmail. Trash is trash. Spam is spam. Same thing. Contacts, you, know, you can get to contacts. So pretty much everything else on the left side there, that's pretty much it what you could do in the inbox. Um, 
In terms of search, it's pretty much the same. You still have a bunch of commands you can give it. You can still, one of the things I used to do, uh, and I used to teach people to do, is to, I had this special uh, bookmark set up called Inbox New, as you can see, it's got its icon and the word new. If I click on it, it simply shows me things that I've snoozed that need to be looked at right now that are important, and also things that are um, new messages, basically. So those are the, I wanted all the new messages to be together so I can see them easily. In Gmail, you can set up an inbox mode. I mean, it's part of the configuration to say, show me new messages automatically. So you don't really even need to do this in Gmail. In Gmail, I have it automatically that way. In inbox, you have to give it a command. And if you want to use the command, you can use the same command here. I mean, if I use the same command, if I get rid of the last part, because there was Gmail, I'm sorry, that was inbox, but Gmail specific. And essentially, I can do this, to copy this. If I go to Gmail and drop it in there, it'll do the same thing. I mean, it'll essentially do exactly the same thing. As you can see, it comes up with the same, same exact stuff. Okay? Exactly the same stuff. So it's doable, and if you want to set up, and I can definitely, you know, all of this is done in a way where the URL gets changed. So you can easily, you know, add whatever criteria you want to the search. And then if you want, you can then save it as a bookmark and you can have a bunch of these different bookmarks. And then you're able to pull up just that, those set of messages on the screen and then deal with them accordingly. So it, that can still be done. You know, the search works the same way. Commands are essentially identical. You know, some things are a little different, but mostly it's exactly the same thing. One of the things here is notice what I had in there is I said, don't show me anything that's in save. Saved was another special um, folder here, or a special bundle, as they called them, um, that enabled you to have an extension for Chrome called Save to Google, uh, or Save to Inbox, I should say. And then when you save to Inbox, then when you click on it, and I have it up here, here it's, uh, you know, looks like this Inbox by Gmail, so, but if you click on it, it'll, it'll save. Um, the, the problem is with, with um, that particular uh, approach is that they're not, they didn't move the functionality over to Gmail. So we used to be able to just say save to inbox and then we'll go into the special saved uh, bundle. And then you have all these different things. Like I had some articles that I liked that I wanted to save in there, as you can see, and it shows a little picture and so on. So, you know, how do you, how do you replace the save? Also pretty easy to replace. Obviously you don't have to save anything in your inbox. You can easily put it, uh, save it as bookmarks. So bookmarks are always there. If you're getting something you really want to, you care about saving, then you save it there. Uh, save to inbox was very limited in terms of what you could add. So you can see it's got this view article, view link, and it's got a little bit of information, but this, you couldn't add any additional comments or annotations or anything like that. So it was very rigid in terms of what you could do with this kind of a simple save, and then you can get to it and that's it. And you can also you know, snooze these kind of uh, save messages and archive them, things like that too, like that Kenya message. But so it, it was it was somewhat useful, but in the Gmail realm, um, if you have articles you want to save, you can always put them as bookmarks. So I mean, it's not any better to put it in the inbox. But if you absolutely had to save them uh, to email here, then you could just, I mean, you can take a link and stick it in a new uh, draft message and and label it appropriately and and keep it there that way so it'll come up during search in other words why would you who cares if you got bookmarks why do you need to put an email you don't but for people who wanted to be able to save some things and be able to find them as part of the search in in, in their emails then it makes sense to have them together there even though they're kind of separate but at the same time they come up in search so you can do the same thing here i mean i can take any url from from the um address bar there at the top, copy it, drop it into, I mean, just go through the example, it's simple enough. So let's say I go to, uh, um, I don't know, we'll go to some kind of, let's see what we're gonna go to, let's go to Fox News, we'll pop, pick some article, uh, Kid Rock, whatever, doesn't matter. Okay, so let's say we wanna go ahead, um, that we want to bookmark this article for some reason, okay? So you just click in the, in the Omni bar, it highlights the URL, you hit Control-C to copy it, you go to Gmail, you click Compose, 
okay? You click on the, um, in the body, hit control V to paste. If you want to put in a subject, you can put in a subject, okay? Whatever, whatever you wanna to add to the subject line, and then you just simply close the window. You don't send it to anybody, you don't put any to, you don't put any BCC or CC, it's the email that's there. So now if I, if I do a search for Kid Rock, Okay, there is this draft message that comes up, and all these things will be draft. If you do it the way I'm, I'm recommending here, all of them will be dra uh, drafts, and then you can, you can just click on it and go directly to it, and it just opens right up from the link from Gmail. So as you can see, I can duplicate the exact same approach, and of course you can easily delete it, uh, as the save by using this kind of technique. It's not as easy as pulling down an option saying save to inbox, which is what it was before, but it's still not that many more clicks at all, and it's still very quick to do, and you accomplish exactly the same thing. So that's the key thing to remember is that, yes, you can't do the save to inbox anymore, but you can certainly duplicate the functionality easily enough to do the same thing. Purchases, you know, you have everything you've purchased where you have things coming from PayPal and Amazon. So again, you set up a filter, and you say, um, you know, let's do that in real time too, for those who don't know how to do it. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and say, from PayPal, okay, it shows me all these things from PayPal, so that's fine. So I go ahead then and click down, and they say create a filter, and we'll call it um, purchases, right? So we're going to say uh, apply a label, skip the inbox, so it automatically goes in the, um, well, actually, I don't want to skip the inbox, but I do want to choose a label, and we'll call it purchases. Okay, create. You can create name purchases, a reserve system label. That's interesting. So you see they're not letting me create that in Gmail because they think it's a reserve because inbox is still running probably or because, well, it has to be because in, in inbox it's, it's, it's a, okay. So go with plan B and you say the purchases call it my purchases, okay? That way they'll let you create it and then it applies it and anything else you want to do, you can apply it to it and then create filter and that's it. Okay, so now everything that um, comes from PayPal will automatically go to uh, my purchases, which is, you know, one of the labels there, okay? Um, you can do the same thing with just about anything else, but the idea is you can recreate these finance and purchases um, and you can create your own categories. One of the things that I didn't like about Inbox was it's so nice that they give you some of these automatic categories, but what if I have some other category? And the answer was no, you can just create a bundle and call it whatever you want, and it's not gonna, I mean, it's gonna automatically stick emails based on the criteria. So essentially they, they kind of duplicated the filter functionality from Gmail, just a little bit more awkward in the way Inbox was implemented. But it's the bottom line on all of this is you can easily create any categories you want using filters and using labels, and then everything will work exactly like Inbox by Gmail or better. In fact, it will work better. Um, okay, so that's pretty much it here. Yeah, that's all we covered here. Now let's talk about the uh, pinning. So up at the top here next to the Inbox search, you have pin capability. So you can take a message, for example, and then you can say, I want to pin this message uh, but example here, let's go to, let's see what we can do here. Let's go to, I don't know, doesn't matter, to this one. And let's say I want to pin it. So uh, it was already pinned, that example. Let's find something that hasn't been pinned yet. Let's open some social. Okay, this hasn't been pinned yet. So you can see next to each item here, you have ability to uh, select a little push pin, pin to the inbox. So if we click on it, it turns blue. And that simply means that the message is pinned, meaning that if you select this push pin at the top, if you turn it on, it will show nothing but these pinned messages, okay? So in Gmail, it's got exactly the same functionality except they call it start, okay? So in Gmail, as you can see, you have a little stars instead of push pins. And so any message can be started by just clicking on the little star. 
And in my case, I actually use multiple stars so I can do different colors. See, I got a blue one here, I got the yellow one here, and I got some other ones too. So, so in Gmail, you actually have a broader capability with pinning because you can do multiple colors to have different meanings for you. You have to identify what these meanings are, but it gives you more capabilities than just a single push pin. And so the way it works is that, okay, so I put a star, what does it mean? It's like turning the pin on. It's the same thing. And now you have, it kind of sticks out a little bit this way. So the way you actually find them is you go is star as a command in the search. And now you can see this is one of the messages. And I have a bunch of other ones that have stars in them. And you can actually identify these different stars by different names. Um, uh, so, you know, if you're interested in that, just let me know. I'll tell you what the different names are. But just to have everything that's been starred, you just put in is starred. And so how do you, you know, at, at the, the inbox, we saw that all you have to do is just move the bar over here and all the stuff that was spent shows up. You know, in Gmail, you don't want to be typing it every time. You don't. So what you can do is you can set up a folder with needed uh, in the bookmarks bar. You can set up a folder. And then in that folder, you simply take any of these commands that you have and you simply bookmark it. So let's say we set up a folder called, uh, I'm going to go ahead and um, let's just do it this way. Let's set up a new folder called email. So I'm going to add a folder called emails or email. Okay, I'm going to take that folder and move it so you can actually see it. So let's put it, uh, I'll just put it here for now. So there's a folder called email. So I can take this command that we have. And you can see we have a different special URL for it. You don't need to know what these URLs are. You just need to simply put in the command, see that it's working the way you want it to work, and you grab the little icon next to the URL, and you drag it over to the uh, bookmark folder. Okay? And so if you like the word pin, call it pin. Okay? Call it pin. So now if I'm sitting in Gmail, and I'm looking at all these messages. If I go back to my email folder, bookmark, and select pinned, it's going to show me everything that's pinned, as you can see right there. Okay? So you can have as many of these different commands, any of uh, these different search criteria set up, and then bookmark each one of them and name them whatever you want to name them. And so you can have almost instant, you know, two click basically access. You pull down one click, pull down the folder, and then second click is to select whichever one you want. It's as simple as that. And then you have exactly the same functionality. So, you know, we had the pin here. We click on the bookmark to see what it is. And here you just clicked here to select it, essentially the same thing. And then the only thing, again, in Gmail, it's more elaborate because we can have multiple kinds of stars that have multiple meanings. So you can say, give me all the red stars, give me all the blue stars, give me all the stars. You can have all this different functionality, have different meanings with something that you couldn't do with pin alone on inbox by Gmail. So again, same functionality, even better. Most of these things can be set up with the same, but better. So, so far we've covered, you know, the bundles and I showed you how you can do better than uh, what even bundles did using filters and labels. Um, pinning, again, you can do better using stars on, on Gmail. Okay, so let's keep going. Let's keep going and see what else we have. So we have, uh, you know, you can go and select uh, Hangouts here to chat with somebody. So, you know, I can pull up my buddy Mark Bars here, and it'll come up, and we can I can talk to him on uh, Hangouts uh, directly from Inbox. In Gmail, it's a little different, but similar. You know, down at the bottom here, you got icons for contacts, Hangouts, and uh, phone calls. So you click on Hangouts, and there is Mark. If I click on them, it'll come right back with exactly the same thing. So essentially, you still have ability to go and do Hangouts um, chatting directly from within the email application, just like you did on the inbox. Other than that, it has the way to select different apps. No big deal. You have your notifications. Of course, in Gmail, we also have notifications up here. And we have the apps here. And we have the account selection here. So everything else is the same between Gmail and inbox by Gmail in terms of the functionality up here. Down at the bottom with the Compose uh, bar, or Compose Fab as they call it, um, we have the ability to, to create a link for any website. You can create a link that gets saved. We, we covered links. I mean, it's not that big of a deal to have it a separate deal. 
you had the uh, reminder, we talked about that, and then you had a few emails. You can go directly to the people you interact with most often, so you can select them directly from there, but we're talking about just a few people. Usually you have a lot more people you interact with, so I practically never use that functionality at all in terms of selecting uh, people, um, selecting people that uh, I talk to a lot because usually it doesn't find them properly. I talk to a lot of other people too. It's not just the people it shows. And it's not that difficult to, if I want to send an email to Gregory, I usually would just, you know, new email and start typing Gregory and there is Gregory. So I mean, it's, you don't need to have a separate icon with his face, everything else. It's not that much uh, our savings. If I go to Gmail, I click compose, type in Gregory, same, same exact thing. So it's, it's, it's really nothing special there that, Gmail, that inbox that by Gmail in terms of this functionality here. Um, in terms of reading emails, you had the only way you could read emails on, on uh, inbox was you always see them in this format here and they're broken down, you know, today, yesterday, so chronologically. And then to pull up an email, you click on it and uh, it comes up and opens it up like that. And then you can go ahead and read it. You can reply to it. You can pin it. You can snooze it. You can delete it. You can say it's done, meaning archive it. So all of these from all of these capabilities, and of course you can move it to whatever bundle you want. So again, same kind of thing you can do in Gmail. You can easily archive it, you can easily delete it, you can easily snooze it, you can easily star it. You know, we looked at all of that. So we have all these snooze, there is delete, there is archive, move to a particular folder, you know, even labels and spam it. So you had all these other functionality that Inbox did not have, but that you exactly the same thing that they had, we also have. Uh, on Gmail, and then um, replying, you can reply. If you click on reply here, it goes and shows you um, that you're replying here, but if you, one thing I wanted to do was, let me see here with something, one second. Uh, I'm trying to see email, it has more than one person. If I have something handy here, um, yeah. So you had uh, no, it's just one person. Anyway, I think you had to reply all and reply just like you do on Gmail. And so it's the same kind of deal here. You know, you take a look at any emails. If you want to reply to it, you just reply, forward. I mean, you have all the buttons. It's, it's just very, very similar in terms of that. And you can select, uh, you can forward it easily and so on. So that's sending messages, forwarding them, replying to them is the same. It's, it's exactly the same. Selecting multiple messages is also very similar. Where you can just, you know, click on the uh, checkbox next to it. You can use shift click to select the whole range like that. And you can control click to deselect things. Because if you just simply click on it one time, oh no, I'm sorry, okay. If you're in selection mode, it, it, you don't need to hit control. Yeah, forget about that. And you can use the shift to select the range. So all of that is the same as Gmail. In with Gmail, same thing here. You can select individual messages. You can also shift click to select multiple messages. You can also have a pull down menu to select all the unread or only starred or only unstarred or select none, so you have some additional functionality there that Inbox didn't have, but essentially it's the same thing. I mean, it's, it's pretty simple to select, deselect, and, and then act on it accordingly. And of course, then you can snooze it, you can pin it, multiple messages, same thing with Gmail. So nothing really you're losing or gaining uh, in terms of selection situation. Um, other than that, that was pretty much it, I mean, the, the big, big, big thing before was uh, snoozing, and that's something that now is part of Gmail. And so the look is different, like I said, I mean, the look is definitely different. Gmail looks like it used to look. But the, the huge benefits of Gmail at this point, if you, if, you, if you now see that we basically can get all the functionality we needed from Inbox by Gmail that was unique, it's not unique anymore. You can duplicate everything in Gmail these days as I showed you. But then you look at Gmail itself, it has a bunch of things that, that the inbox never had. For example, um, 
And you know, one of the things that they added in the inbox, I should say before I continue here, is the smart replies. That was very handy. And that was the first app that got it, and then Gmail got it later. But now you have the smart replies in Gmail too, so that's another thing. Uh, the big, big pluses in Gmail, the new Gmail, is Smart Compose. When you start typing a message, um, see, I put in later, it says today, automatically, so I can just hit tab key for the period, and yeah, please let me know uh, as soon as possible and see possible dropped in there so I just hit tab um, um, sincerely and puts that in there appreciate it see and so it puts appreciate it so I can in other words make these automate automated selections and sometimes it puts as much as the, the entire rest of the sentence for you and so it really saves on time so the Smart Compose is definitely a great feature, and um, and that's definitely something that you, I'd recommend you turn on uh, in settings in, in Gmail, new Gmail, and use it because it's very handy. You don't have to use it, but at the same time, it's very handy to save some time. That's something that was never part of the uh, inbox. Uh, smart replies are now in Gmail too, so just like initially they were in inbox, now they're in, in uh, new Gmail as well, so you're not losing anything. Biggest biggest difference also is is the add-ons. You can have inter integration with Keep Notes, as I mentioned earlier. You got integration with with um, with Calendar. And one one other thing you can do, by the way, in terms of um, um, being able to do like reminders, things like that, is you can also create tasks. I, I I didn't cover that, but let's cover that right now. So if I have a message, I can actually um, click on Tasks. And um, when it opens up the little bar, I can have it there, and I can just take the message, and I can drop it into this bar here. That's one way to do it. Another way to do this, if you simply select the message, if you pull down the menu at the top here, it's called the More menu, and you can see there's an option called Add to Tasks. And so it automatically gets it in there, or if you drag it, same kind of thing. And then it puts it here without any date. So what you can do is you can actually go and, and edit this particular task, and you can add a date. So we put in October 12, for example. Uh, you can't put in a time, so it can only be a date. Uh, and so that's why I would recommend using the Google Keep approach, because then you can specify date and time. If you use the task, you can only specify date. That's just the way it works. And so here, it's like a task that you're putting yourself, it's saying on that date, I need to do this task. And so you indicate the date when, you can even add subtasks. You can put in whatever description here you want, more details, and then it gets saved. So the idea being that if you go to the calendar, let me just jump real quick to the calendar, and if I look at the calendar for, let me just refresh it, for December 12th, you can see, October 12th, I'm sorry, uh, there is this five secrets of holiday travel, and if I click on it, it gives me you know the basic info, whatever I put in there, which I didn't put anything, I just left the defaults, but it also has got a link, view-related email, so if I click on it, it'll go ahead and jump into the Gmail, as you imagined, and pull the email right up. And the only other choice I have is mark it complete, which will basically archive it saying it's done. So it's a handy feature, and you can you know, certainly use tasks to add as many things as you want to the calendar. Uh, use, that, use that approach. But uh, I like the keep approach better because I can specify the date and time. So it's more precise. And so that's, but you can use both. You can use either however you want to do it. So that's another thing. So, but the big thing, as I mentioned before, is the add-ons themselves. You have add-on for Google Keep Notes. You have add-on for tasks. You have add-on, in my case, I have add-on for, uh, you can look at your calendar. Um, it's more of a looking thing than anything else here, but still you can take a look at the calendar, see what's going on without jumping to another tab. And also in my case, I have this DocuSign, which enables me to pull a document that has an attachment that needs to be signed. And then using DocuSense service, you can digitally sign that document, which is you know very slick. Works really well. I use it on several different people uh, already. Um, works great. So there's a bunch of different, if you click on the plus sign on the right side, it will give you a list of all kinds of different uh, third-party developers that uh, enable you to uh, 
integrate with Gmail. You know, you got CRM systems, you got email merges, you got dialing uh, capabilities, um, you've got uh, this right for Gmail, for example, which is a, another task manager, project manager. It's very nice. I mean, it definitely, definitely recommend it. There's a email merge for Gmail. So all of this can be added and, and used within Gmail, something you didn't have anything like this on the inbox before. And in Gmail, you have it now. And so there's definitely, and of course, speaking of dialing, you know, you have ability to dial directly from Gmail. If you click on this little phone calls, you can select whoever you want to type in a phone number. And if it's within US or Canada, the calls are free. If it's um, something that's uh, outside of the country, then you can add, you know, 10 bucks to the account or however much you want. And then you can just make international phone long distance calls directly from Gmail itself by using this approach. So you don't have to be dialing anything. It does it for you. If you have the setup with audio and microphone, everything, you just sit and talk. You get your computer in front of you. It's absolutely the most convenient and most efficient way to do business when it involves a bunch of phone calling. It's awesome. And if you tie in Google Voice, which is their uh, free service that allows you to essentially have a single uh, virtual phone number, and then you take that phone number, and then you give it to people, and you can tie up to six additional real phone numbers to that one virtual number, so that way, whenever anybody calls, you can have up to six different locations ringing and you can pick up the call from any of them. So the idea being that you're giving people a phone number that doesn't really exist. I mean, they can't get any info on it or anything because it's a virtual number. It's not a real phone number. But if they call it, then with your setup, it'll automatically allow you to have it ring wherever you want. Like in my case, I have it whenever phone calls come into me, it rings on my computer, you know, from Gmail. Essentially, I get uh, I get notification hangouts that, that there is a phone call coming in, and I can answer it by clicking on a button, and I can just talk like I'm talking right now. So I can have the phone call. The other person doesn't even know if I'm using phone or not, but I'm just sitting talking like this and listening and, and having a phone call. So that's one place. Second place, I have it set up for three. I don't have it for six. I could have it up to six, but I only need three. And so my cell phone rings when phone calls come in, my computer rings, and my main home uh, landline number rings, which is a totally different number. So that way, you have the anonymity of not having to disclose your real phone numbers to anybody, because you're always giving everybody the virtual number. And, um, and at the same time, you're able to have the phone number ring anywhere. So if you're going on vacation, you're staying in a hotel, you just simply change configuration to say, you know, ring here too. And if people call you, then your hotel phone will ring and you can answer the call and, and talk to people that way. Nobody needs to know where you are. Nobody does know. Nobody needs to know your real phone numbers. Another big useful uh, feature of this uh, setup is, let's say that you're moving carriers. You went from one phone number, your cell number changed from one to a different one because you couldn't port it for some reason or you didn't want to port it, it doesn't matter. Bottom line is you need that new phone number. How do you deal with it? You have to now, Go to all of your contacts from now and, you know, from the time you were born, but essentially, and you have to give them a new phone number, okay? Otherwise, they won't be able to reach you anymore. It's an impossible task to do because you don't even have a lot of these people anywhere. They may have your number, but you don't even have their numbers anymore. So using this approach, if you use this virtual number, you always give nothing but virtual number, and that way you can just tie it to any of the up to six numbers you want to ring. And so whenever phone number changes, you just simply change in your configuration, they still keep calling the same number, but they get you on a new number now. So very convenient, very handy. So in terms of interfacing it with this, like I said, it's very useful and convenient because you can have your computer, you answer calls on your computer, you can make phone calls on your computer. It's a very, very um, effective way to do phone calling when you're busy and you're working and trying to put some information in and handle your emails. And so Gmail becomes like a hub where essentially you can do anything you want. You have people sending you contracts. You can sign them right from Gmail. You can communicate with them from Gmail. You can make phone calls with Gmail. You can jump into Hangouts, both video and otherwise, uh, directly from Gmail. You got all your contacts here. You're able to totally document and, not document, but organize your emails so everything is in nice bundles where maybe you have multiple companies 
that you're uh, dealing with. So you have emails for each company be stored in separate uh, with separate label. So you can instantly put up pull up with a single click all the emails for that particular company or the particular person or that particular project. I mean, it's amazing. If you really look at all the features of what Gmail can do, it's absolutely amazing how much you can get done productively in the single environment on, on a pretty much single screen. Amazing. Uh, the reason I want to reemphasize that or emphasize it, I should say, is because I keep running into people running businesses that even do use Gmail and they have no clue that all of these features capability exist and they do things in an old fashioned way where they have a little address book, you know, a paper address book in their pockets and they use their uh, you know, phone call to make all the calls where they dial 10 digits and they scrub one, dial 10 digits again. So all of this translates into, from the business standpoint, major loss of time and major effort being spent for something you don't need to spend on. In other words, it's still concentrating on actually doing the business things. Like, let's say you're a baker, okay? Let's say you're a baker, but you're one of those astute bakers that uses technology for business. Okay, you're, you're a baker, okay? Nobody can bake your stuff for you. You need to do it yourself. But all this other minutia you need to deal with, communicating with people, collaborating with people, you know, sending them samples, looking at the new menu, uh, you know, uh, potentially new menu PDFs, things like that. You don't need to do this manually or on paper or anything like that. It can all be done on, on a computer. You're sending information through Gmail anyway. Use these other tools as well. I mean, there's a lot of functionality you can put in uh, in terms of um, knowing and keeping track of things, labels can be used to keep track of all kinds of stuff where, you know, whenever email comes in, it becomes something and then it becomes something else once you deal with it. So you have this kind of information flow potentially in place. Uh, I mean, there's many, many, many things you can do. One of the things I do, for example, with Gmail uh, in, in uh, connection with the cell phones is on the Gmail version on, on the phone, allows you to say play a ringtone based on a particular label okay so i guarantee you that 90 percent of people don't use this feature don't even know it exists okay but there is an option on gmail for cell phones that allow, allows you to set up a ringtone so whenever a message comes in with that particular um, label that you indicate it will go ahead and uh, see there's one of them no that's not one of them <clears throat> So it gives you ultimate flexibility where you can do a lot of things directly from Gmail and spend more time on your business and less time dealing with, with uh, things that technology can help you with. That's, I guess, the, the main message here. So if you have any questions um, about uh, any of the transitionary things you're doing from uh, inbox to Gmail, uh, or anything specific about the new Gmail, uh, by all means, um, let me know, and I'll be happy to answer those questions for you. And um, it's not a big deal that, G that uh, Inbox by Gmail is being killed. It really isn't. I mean, initially, I, I kind of felt bad that they're doing it, especially with you know, all the other announcements of other things being killed, like Google+. But looking at it now and looking as I thought about all the different features and capabilities that Inbox brought with it and now what you can do with Gmail, we're really not losing anything. I mean, if you really like the look, the kind of bluish clean look of uh, Inbox, yeah, we're kind of losing that to some degree because like I said, you can actually try to mimic the look to be similar uh, using Gmail. Um, but it's not the most important thing. The functionality and all the features that they had and all the innovation they put into Inbox initially is now totally available through Gmail and even more so in terms of it's even more capable because of what's been put in there. So with that being the case, you know, I think it's fine that Inbox is, is being killed and um, it served its purpose and it's not that big of a deal. Again, thank you and until next time.